Hello everyone. We are going to start talking today about how uh, an image is formed in computer graphics. So let us start by looking at the model for image formation. Uh, so in the image formation model in computer graphics tries to mimic the process of taking pictures in the real world. So we are going to try and set up uh, our virtual world by uh, defining the geometry for virtual objects. We are going to set up a synthetic camera. And we are going to set up a plane which we, we will call the image plane and we will define the bounds of the image and we will set up a light source in the world. And then we will simulate the process of light bouncing of objects and reaching the camera. So this is how you see things in the real world. Light uh, from say the sun bounces off objects uh, during daytime and reaches your eyes or a camera and an image is formed. In the case of your eyes, the image is formed on your retina. In the case of a camera, the image is formed on the sensor. Right? So we are trying to mimic this process uh, to create our images in computer graphics. So uh, let us uh, see some nomenclature. The ray that is uh, uh, coming from the light source is called the incident ray. It can bounce off objects and then it becomes a reflected ray. And if it passes through translucent or transparent objects, then that ray is called the transmitted ray. So we have to make uh, so this process of image formation in the real world is very complex. The physics of image formation can get extremely computationally intensive. So we make some modeling assumptions. So one of the first modeling assumptions we make and these are uh, we will relax. You can relax these uh, modeling assumptions for um, more complicated imaging or rendering, but uh, we will not uh, do those things in this course. Uh, so for the purpose of this course, we have the following modeling assumption. Right? We are going to assume that all our light sources are point light sources. So they do not have any physical extent and they are going to give off light in all possible directions equally. The next modeling assumption that we will make is that our camera is a pinhole camera. So I don't know whether uh, you have you, you made a model of a pinhole camera in your childhood but a pinhole camera would be just like a box with a pinhole on one side uh, through which light enters and on the other side there will be a, a screen and if you point it towards the source of light the image of that source is formed inverted on the screen right so this is a very simple camera um, we will create a mathematical model of the pinhole camera and we will use that in our um, in our algorithms uh, for computer graphics so um, this might seem very restrictive because a real camera has all sorts of things like complex lenses and apertures and uh, focus and so on but um, a large variety of algorithms in computer graphics and also computer vision rely on only the pinhole camera model and surprisingly it works beautifully in most cases okay so we will see um, how it works for us the third uh, modeling assumption that we are going to make is that we have a raster image model and i'm just going to follow up uh, in the subsequent lectures about what is a raster image model it basically means that our image is made up of these discrete raster uh, elements which uh, we tend to call pixels in common language so uh, it's made up of a discrete set of points right and uh, we will we will we will study more about this in 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 the coming uh, coming lectures so here are a few here are a few things i want you to think about right so given that we have this model right and we will we will discuss all the details about um, what uh, how do we set up these objects in in the in the virtual world how do we create this imaging model and how do we create uh, how do we situate and orient and take pictures with this pinhole camera 
so we will discuss all that right so you don't want to worry about it but uh, assuming that you know this is an abstract model of image formation in this model can you reason about shadows so wh what i mean by can you reason about shadows is that if you see the image that has been created using such a model will you be able to see shadows so shadows are generated when uh, light from an object is uh, sorry light from a light source is blocked by an object from reaching another surface so that surface um, uh, lies in the shadow of the first object right so if i have this imaging model where we have a point light source and a pinhole camera and a raster image model will i be able to draw shadows for objects which are cast on other objects so you can imagine that there might be a floor here on which this shadow is being formed or shadow is being formed uh, then will i be able to see these shadows in the image Okay. The second thing that I want you to think about is can we create area light sources? So we just now said that we have point light sources in our model, but real world light sources are mostly area light sources, which are light sources which have some physical extent. Right? So they have the, the light source has some dimension and it covers some area or some volume in the real world. Um, Using just point light sources, can you create such light sources which are area lights? And the moment you start thinking about area lights, you will also figure out that the shadows that you see are, um, are going to become different when you place area lights instead of point lights. So if you have a point light source in the world, your shadows are going to be sharp shadows like this. So the boundary of the shadow is going to be very sharp. You see the shadows. But if you have an area light source, so there is a light source that is has some uh, you know finite size, then if one part of the light source might be blocked by say uh, object, another part of the same light source may not be blocked by the object. So the boundary of the shadow becomes blurry, right? And these shadows are called soft shadows. Most of the shadows in the real world are soft shadows. Just look at the shadow your hand is casting. Um, on say uh, a table in front of you and so on you will see that that shadow is not very sharp the edges are not sharp or just uh, just go outside during daytime and see the shadows uh, that the sun casts and you will see that the boundaries of the shadow are not very sharp so uh, can we create area lights and consequently soft shadows uh, in this model then the third thing that I want you to think about is that uh, can we uh, simulate diffraction? Okay? So um, revise high school optics if you do not remember uh, diffraction. right? So in diffraction the idea was that light is obstructed by an obstacle whose size is comparable to the wavelength of light. But uh, wavelength of light, we never talked about light as a wave in, uh, in this imaging model, right? So we only have uh, rays of light. We have incident ray, reflected ray, transmitted ray and so on. So can you really uh, model, uh, model diffraction in this imaging model? And um, the final thing that I want you to think about is that can, can you uh, take care of energy transfer? So everything, uh, so there should be conservation of energy during light transport right uh, so if uh, 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 so you suppose you have a, a light source which is a, a bulb which is giving out power at, uh, at at 60 watts right so then it is obviously giving out uh, energy and this energy is going to bounce around in your scene and some of it is going to reach the camera to create uh, the image so in this process energy of course in the real world is conserved but uh, can you can you uh, do the same computation in your model inside this model that we just now talked about Give, given only the facts that i have told you so far right so you do not get to assume other things so if this is all that you know about the imaging model can you uh, compute how much energy is getting transferred and whether it is getting conserved so think about these things uh, and we will uh, we will continue this in the, the next video thank you